Today's lesson is topic writing. Choosing between two volunteer opportunities. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff, and I am Hanny. Yes, today, folks, we are going to be writing as always. But we've got kind of a fun assignment today. Okay, today we'll be writing, and when we're writing, we're going to be choosing between two volunteer opportunities. Okay, we can volunteer at two different places, let's say, but we can only. Pick one. So we're going to talk about which option we're going to choose and why. Now, here's a small note before we get started. Notice that we've used this word "volunteer" in two different ways. Okay, you can be a volunteer. Great in that situation. The word "volunteer" is being used as a noun, but you can also volunteer in that situation. You're using the word. As a verb, yes. To volunteer is to act as a volunteer. You give someone your time, or you give some organization your time for free because you want to do something good for the community, or for this person, or for this organization. And yes, a volunteer opportunity is an opportunity to volunteer or to be a volunteer. Anyways, I've said enough for now. Let's go ahead and get started. Volunteer opportunities 当义工要做什么事
Eco Earth Cleanup Day. Then there's some extra information to fill in the blanks there, to fill in what knowledge or answer some questions you might be having, I should say. And then, yes, you have information. If you are interested, this is how you contact the people who are running this Eco Earth Cleanup Day shindig. Anyways, it's the first notice. Let's go ahead and move on to the second notice. It says, Do you want to make a difference in your community? Do you love animals? Then come join our team. There you go. This notice starts out and it just grabs your attention immediately. How about that? Now it says, whether you are interested in promoting our work or helping out with the tasks that keep the shelter running smoothly, we have a position for you. Schedules and duties are flexible. Please contact our staff at the number to start today. And this time the contact isn't an email address. It's a phone number, 0221234567. Six, seven. Anyways, I like both of these notices, so I know why our essay writer here, our topic writing writer, I know why this person is having an issue making a choice. Both sound good. In the first situation, you can save the earth. In the second situation, you can save animals. Apparently, you can go ahead and you can work at an animal shelter. And in the second notice, hey, you can pretty much work at any time that you want because schedules and duties are flexible. So, yeah, it's kind of help animals at your leisure. That is pretty cool. 好，我们看到这边有两则这个义工活动公告。那第一则呢，就是跟我们这种环境保护日有关系啊。他是要去进滩，要去进山，把那个海滩啊，还有一些健行步道的垃圾清空。那这边要注意，他是有提到有固定一个日期，是四月二十一号，是他们一年一度的这个日子。那么第二则呢，它则是关于这个动物收容所，你可以去帮他们做一些日常的杂物啊，或者是帮助他们这个收容所的营运更顺利。这是他的活动目的，所以你可以去想想看，你想要选择哪一个。而且这个动物收容所，它的工作是比较弹性的。那相对之下，另外一个是比较固定的，所以你就可以从这些点去想想看，你喜欢做哪一个啊？那你喜欢拯救世界，还是你喜欢拯救动物呢？还有你的时间怎么样才可以配合？这些都可以写入我们的写作当中。All right, folks. So let's go ahead and start forming our piece of writing. What to do? What to do? Well, I guess you can write an essay and organize your thoughts and figure out exactly which volunteer opportunity that you want to go with. Anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and start putting together this piece of writing. You could say something like, "Hmm, I saw two volunteer notices at school today. One about the Eco Earth Cleanup Day." Happening in April, and okay, folks, I see a blank here. So get out your pencils, your pens, pieces of paper. You get the idea, and do what you can to fill in the blank. I've already filled you guys in as far as these notices are concerned. So it's your turn. Get to work. 好，我们今天第一个句子是我今天在学校看到两则义工的公告，一则是四月举办的 Eco Earth 净滩净山日活动，那另一则则是在一间动物收容所当义工。那同学们听到一个怎么样，另外一个怎么样？而且我们选择只有两个、哦，所以你就是用 one 跟 the other 来表达。所以前面你是说 one about 什么什么 ，the other about 什么什么。好，再来我们另外一个是关于在动物收容所当义工。那当义工，我刚刚说过 ，volunteer 可以当动词，所以你把它摆在 about 后面。哎，摆在介系词后面是动词，应该要做什么呢？还有，在动物收容所要怎么表达呢？动物收容所是 animal shelter， 那这是一个精确的地点。你的这个地点介系词要用什么呢？可以想想看，准备动笔喽。All right, the suspense is killing me. What is this person going to do? Oh, I just don't know. Well. Actually, the suspense—it's not going to really kill you guys. In fact, the suspense is going to end like right now. Okay, as far as this piece of writing is concerned, I guess it's tough to choose between one thing and another. That much is clear. But it's important in a piece of writing like this to not only tell people what you've chosen. But why you have chosen it as well? And yeah, we're gonna focus on that from this point forward. So yes, the decision. Okay, it's gonna get made right now as far as the writing is concerned. Okay. Anyways, yes, you could start this sentence when you make the big reveal like this. You could say something like, "After reviewing the posted information, comma." And there you go. You've got a blank. You can fill in what you have chosen, or you can say what this person has chosen. So again, there's a blank. That's for you guys to fill in. Get to work. 
。好，第二个句子是看过张贴的资讯后，我决定加入近滩近山日的活动。好，那你要表达决定做什么，我们常常就是用 decide to 加上原形动词。那你已经下定决心，所以你可以用完成式 have decided to 加上什么什么。再来是你要加入某个活动，那个加入的动词要用什么呢？如果你是用 enter 的话，它是表达开始加入某一个组。组织啊，像是进入某个学校或者是参加比赛，所以这边我们可能应该要用 join 比较适合它表达参加某个群体啊，或是加入某人某活动之类的。好，再来是这个活动的部分，同学们可能会想到用 activity， 不过我们后面还会学到更厉害的字，我们会用 initiative 来表达积极的行动，为了解决某个问题而产出的计划。Okay. The question is why? Why have you chosen this particular option and not the other? Why have you decided to join the cleanup day initiative? Why? Answer that question now. Well, hold on, folks. We're still in the introduction part of our essay. Remember, supporting details like that usually come. After that, okay. So leave your introduction and introduction. Move on to other things later on. So let's go ahead and kind of wrap up this introductory paragraph, okay, or what's going to become an introductory paragraph by giving some more information about what the Cleanup Day Initiative is that we're talking about here. Remember, it's called the Eco Earth Cleanup Day Initiative. Now, yeah, in this sentence, you could say something like, "For this event." Volunteers will blank. Yeah, what are these volunteers going to do? That's what you guys have to do right now. Go ahead and fill in the blanks. Tell us what these volunteers will be doing for the Eco Earth Cleanup Day. 好，我们选择完活动的时候，你不要急着马上说，因为我要做什么什么，我是为了什么才选择这个活动。你可以先大概简述一下这个做义工的活动内容是什么，你的选择它的内容是什么。那所以我们在写这个句子，他说呢，这个活动的义工会到北台湾附近的海滩和登山步道清扫垃圾。那我们要表达清扫垃圾，我们可以用 clean up 这个片语动词，它可以表达去清洁某个地方啊，或者是去打扫除去污染物啊，除。去垃圾等等的。好，那我们要先写完这个动作，然后之后才会接地方的介系词片语嘛。所以我们在写的时候，你就是先写 clean up trash 清扫垃圾，然后再是接小地点，然后再接大地点。那么大地点这个北台湾附近这个北方的北部台湾一个北部可以用 northern 这个形容词来表达。All right, folks, that's it for the introduction. So let's move on to the next part of this essay or The next part of this piece of writing. Next, we're going to answer that question. I was talking about it before. The question is why? Why has this person decided to choose the option that they have chosen? Well, you can start off by saying something like, "The main reason I want to participate in this event is that." And there you go. You can provide the reasons why you have decided to join what you have joined. 下一句是，我想参加这个活动的主要原因是我对于环境保护非常感兴趣。要表达某人对什么感兴趣，那就是某人加上 be interested， 后面要记得用介系词 in 再加一个名词 be interested in something。好，至于环境保护，我们就是用 environmental protection 来表达。environmental 就是环境的，那么 protection 就是 protect 名词，表示保护。All right, so. That's it for the essay, right? You've already said, okay, the, this is what I'm gonna do, and this is why I'm gonna do it. Peace out, right? No way, you can't do that. Okay, you've got to add some details there, some personal touches. Why don't you tell people why you're doing what you're doing? One, and then some personal motivations or reasons why you're gonna do that. Why don't you tell them what your interest is in the program or the initiative that you've chosen? You could say something like, "My interest blank," and there you go. You guys need to fill in that blank. Go for it. 好，下一个句子比较麻烦。他说：“我这个兴趣啊，在我最近看到一部关于人们乱丢垃圾而造成海洋生物死亡的纪录片之后而被激发。”哦、oh, ，他的那个题目只有 my interest， 但我们要写的东西有好多、哦。那我们一个一个阶段慢慢来。首先是我们先把它简化成我的兴趣被一部纪录片来激发，所以这时候你就可以用被动语态 my interest was 
激发的被动语态，然后 by 什么什么。那么纪录片的英文是 documentary， 我们待会在后面的文章还会看到。好，再来被一部纪录片激发，那是什么纪录片呢？我们不知道什么嘛，这是一个不明确的先行词，所以你接下来要用一个限定用法的关系子句来补充说明，是我最近看的，来限定它的范围。那这时候这个限定用法，你要记得它的。关系子句前面就没有逗号喽。然后我们最后再来处理关于人们乱丢垃圾而造成海洋生物死亡的这个部分。那这里你要特别注意它的重点是海洋生物死亡。然后你要先把这个重点写出来，之后我们再用像 because of due to 或是 owing to 等等来引出这个原因，就是人们乱丢垃圾的原因。记得这个 due to 跟 owing to 它是比较正式的用法。Okay, folks. Now I said earlier. That you have to go ahead and you have to add personal touches. But remember, we're writing an essay, not a novel. So all good things must come to an end. And next, we're going to conclude things. Let's bring things to a close by constructing a good concluding sentence or a good conclusion. You could say something like, "Picking up garbage might not be the most glamorous thing in the world." Blank. And there's going to be a but in there somewhere. But if we all did it regularly. The impact would be incredible. So there's another blank for you guys. Go ahead and fill it in. And later on, when we actually read our sample essay, you can compare your answers to the ones that we generated and put into our sample essay. 好，那我们来看最后结论的句子是：捡垃圾也许不是世界上最令人向往的事，但却是如此简单易行的事。如果我们每个人都经常这么做，影响必定不容小觑。好，这边只有一段，就是“但却是如此简单易行的事”要表达。那这个句子看起来好像没有主词哎，可是我们一定是要用 but 这个对等连接词来表达嘛。那对等连接词你要注意，它是连接两个完整的子句，所以 but 后面应该要主词跟动词。那这时候我们就用 it。来取代前面那个 picking up garbage 这件事来当它的主词，那么它的动词就用 is it is 怎么样怎么样。好，那表达如此简单的事，我们可以用 such 加上 a 或是 an 加上形容词加上名词这样的句型来表达，真是怎么样的事，如此怎么样的事，这样会了吧？<音乐> All right, folks. Let's go ahead and actually start reading from our sample essay, our sample piece of writing. It's called "Keeping the Earth Green and Clean." So, yes, our writer does not want to work at that shelter. That much is clear. This person wants to keep the Earth green and clean. This person is an environmentalist. There you have it. But all jokes aside, let's go ahead and start reading from our essay. It begins by saying. I saw two volunteer notices at school today. One about the Eco Earth Cleanup Day happening in April, and the other about volunteering at an animal shelter. But based on the title, it's pretty clear the author won't be picking the animal shelter. Like I said before, after all, this person wants to keep the earth green and clean. And yeah, you can help keep the earth stay green and clean by picking up garbage. Not so much by helping animals, though. Helping animals is a very, very noble thing to do. Moving on, though, after reviewing the posted information, after reviewing the notices, I have decided to join the Clean Up Day initiative. For this event, volunteers will clean up trash at beaches and hiking trails around northern Taiwan. Now, before I get started here on the second paragraph of our essay, we've got a vocabulary word to talk about. The word initiative. Here, we're not talking about a person with initiative. We're not talking about losing the initiative or gaining the initiative. Although having the initiative is a good thing, and being an initiative person is also good. No, here, an initiative. Okay, it's kind of like a campaign to do something good. Okay, it's kind of an act that is designed to right a wrong or to improve the world or something in some way. 好，我们刚刚说到活动，我们用 activity 那个字，然后我们说后面还会介绍一个更厉害的字，就是 initiative。initiative 当名词，它表示积极的行动啊，或者是倡议。那刚刚 Jeff 老师他有提到 lose the initiative 或是 gain the initiative， 这时候它的意思是主动权。像我们可以说 take the initiative 就表示先发制人，主动出击。那相反的 lose the initiative 就是丧失主动权。Okay, moving on. The next sentence says, "The main reason I want to participate in this event is that I am very interested 
in environmental protection. By the way, if you participate in something, you play a role in that thing, you take part in that thing, okay? You make yourself a part of that thing in an important way. You almost devote yourself to that thing, but usually not that strong. Anyways, this person is going to participate in this event. This person is going to show up and he's going to be a, he or she is going to be a part of this event. They're going to do this eco earth cleanup day initiative thing. They're a part of it. I'll move on next. Okay, the next sentence says my interest was spurred by a documentary I saw recently about the loss of ocean life due to careless human littering. Now, here we've got this word spur to talk about. Now, in the West, okay, I should say, in the old West there in the United States, very often cowboys wore spurs on their boots and they would kick horses with their spurs to get those horses going. And yes, that spur on the boot there, that was a noun here. We're using this word spur as a verb. And yes, if something spurs your interest, let's say, it gets that interest going. It makes you excited. It makes you super interested in that thing. So here, my interest was spurred by something, i.e., I was made alive by something. My interest was awoken by this thing. I became enthusiastic and incite and excited about this thing. My interest was aroused by this thing. Further, we also have the word documentary. A documentary is a type of movie. Usually a documentary, it chronicles real life events. It recounts real life events. It tells a real life story by way of real footage and also interviews. Yeah, very often if you turn on the TV and you see a movie and there are a whole lot of interviews Views in that movie, chances are that movie is a documentary. 好，我们来看一下 participate in something。这就表示去参加、参与什么什么。你也可以用 take part in something 来表示就参加活动那些的意思。再来是 spur。刚刚 Jeff 老师有提到，像以前啊，他们在可能像西方或者是牛仔他们在骑马的时候，他们靴子根部会有那个马刺。那 spur 就是指那个马刺，它可以刺一下那个马，然后鞭策它继续行动、继续奔跑。那我们就可以联想到这个 spur， 它当动词具有激励啊、鞭策、促进的意思。还有同学们，如果你有看 M B， 你就会知道马刺队的队名有 spur 这个字。Okay, moving on. Next, the author says the film showed how marine animals are killed by swallowing tiny bits of plastic, and how the buildup of debris destroys ocean habitats. Now we've got three things to talk about in this sentence. First of all, marine animals are animals that live in the ocean. Yes, marine. It's an adjective meaning of or having to do with the ocean or Oceans. Then debris. When we're talking about debris, we're talking about small pieces of garbage. Now, that's not hard to understand. Small pieces of something that don't really belong somewhere. We can talk about those things as being debris. That's not tough to understand. The pronunciation, though, can be a bit tricky. It's not debris or debris. It is debris. Mind the French translation. But anyways, yes, debris. Small pieces of garbage. Let's say you can call those things debris. Further, we also have this word habitat. A habitat is the place where something lives. It's the place where some living creature naturally lives. 好，这边来看一下这个。刚刚 Jeff 老师说 debris 这个字，你要注意它的发音。它的字尾 s 是不发音的，而且 debris 它是不可数名词，表示残骸啊、垃圾啊，或是碎片。那还还有要请同学们特别注意这个句子 ：The film showed how 什么什么 and how 什么什么。它就是用 how 引导名词子句来当 show 的受词，两句 how 都是当做 show 的受词。Okay, moving on. The author next writes: The images stuck with me for days, and since then I have wanted to help. While this cleanup day cannot solve everything. I think that the awareness it will raise about the effects of littering is crucial. Now, here we've got the word "crucial" to talk about. If something is crucial, it's essential. It's super important. It can't be done without. That's all there is to it. Now, picking up garbage. Our author concludes: picking up garbage might not be the most glamorous thing in the world, but it's such an easy thing to do if we all did it regularly. The impact would be incredible. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this word "glamorous." It's an adjective of or having to do with glamour. Yes, if you are glamorous or if you have glamour, you're kind of like a movie star, like a Kardashian or someone like that. So, yeah, you probably won't see Chloe Kardashian or Courtney Kardashian or one of the Kardashians there. Cleaning up the beach because it isn't the most glamorous thing in the world to do. So it's still the right thing to do. 
不管有没有魅力的大明星，或者是我们一般民众，大家都可以来帮忙为环境尽一份心力，好不好？好，我们来看最后两个单字 ，crucial 呢，它是指至关重要、非常重要。那像刚刚 Jeff 老师也有提到 essential 这个字，或是我们可以用 important 或是 vital、critical， 这些都是形容重要的。再看 glamorous， 它是形容很令人向往或是很有魅力的。那注意它的名词是 glamour。Glamour， 那这是美式拼法。那英式拼法是 Glamour。Glamour 就表示魅力或是诱惑力，它是不可数名词。All right, folks, with that, this month's topic writing lesson is in the books, and it's time for us to say bye bye. Bye bye. We'll see you next time.